Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Colonel Paul Pride, and I'm the superintendent of the Ohio State Highway Patrol. And I'd like to start this uh, this uh, conference, press conference off by saying, first of all, first and foremost, our thoughts and prayers are uh, with those who have been uh, uh, the victims of this incident uh, this evening and also with the, the family members of those uh, that are involved. This evening at about 7.24 p.m. on the Ohio State uh, Fairgrounds, a trooper reported a ride had malfunctioned uh, on the fairground property. And uh, the initial reports indicated that riders were injured uh, from that uh, mishap. Uh, what I can confirm at this time is that one person has been, uh, is deceased as a result of this incident. We also have um, additionally seven other persons who are injured. Uh, three of those are in critical conditions. Uh, all of the folks that have been injured have been transported to local hospitals uh, throughout the region. Uh, we do continue to uh, try to reach out to family members. Um, at this point, we won't release any names of any of those that have been injured uh, because we are still in the process of reaching out to family and notifying uh, in, the, in the instance of the, the person that is deceased, uh, making sure that we uh, have all of the family uh, notified of that death. Um, we continue to work with our partners from the Columbus Police Department, the Columbus uh, Fire, and also the Department of Agriculture. Um, it, it is the responsibility uh, of the Highway Patrol, and that's why I'm here. It is the responsibility of the Highway Patrol to provide security uh, at the fairgrounds, but we also have the responsibility of investigations on all state-owned and leased property. And so we will be, um, over the course of the next days and weeks, uh, conducting a thorough investigation uh, of this incident. And at this point, I would uh, like to introduce the uh, director of the Department of Agriculture, uh, Director David Daniels. Thank you, Colonel. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, first of all, I want to say that our hearts and condolences go out to those that have been injured by this tragic accident. Um, minutes after I learned of the incident that has happened this evening in the amusement ride division, I spoke to the governor, and he ordered the ride shut down here on the Ohio State Fairgrounds until we have an opportunity with our amusement ride inspection personnel to do a complete review of all the rides that are there. Um, um, ride inspection is one of the most important things that we do. The Department of Agriculture is responsible for that uh, uh, operation. We do not rush inspections. Our inspections take place, and as amusement rides come in, they are checked several times uh, why they're being put up in each and every day. We will begin an investigation on this to determine what the failure was, if any, and how this accident occurred. Um, we started out today with 11 rides that did not open because we were not able to get the inspection work done on them. Some of those were cleared during the day. We have five rides that will prop, will not, uh, or four rides that will not be uh, operating because they do not meet the mechanical tests. So um, we have, uh, we will work through the night and into tomorrow to make sure that those reinspections are done and the rides are uh, inspected to the manufacturer's specifications. So we will be continuing and concluding those as soon as can and uh, have those uh, hopefully open back up for the, the public when we are sure that those inspections have been done. So I would now um, introduce the governor of the state of Ohio, John Casey. It's a... Uh very tough day, very tough night for the people of our state because of the loss of our, of our citizens. It's kind of hard to imagine that you have family that goes to a state fair and those calls come that there was a terrible accident, a terrible tragedy, and somebody you love was involved. It's a, it's a very, very tough situation when you go somewhere to celebrate and have a great time and you, you're with friends and sometimes with family and, you know, the fair is about uh, the best things in life and, and then tonight with this accident, it becomes a terrible, terrible tragedy. 
Um, of course, what I want to know immediately is, first of all, what are we doing with rides? And so we shut all the rides down. And then <clears throat> beyond that, we want to know about what's the process for inspection. And we have a man here who's, uh, who heads our operation. He's been an inspector for 17 plus years, nearly a couple decades. He not only inspects the rides here at the Ohio State Fair, but he has been involved in inspecting rides all across the state. I think he mentioned there were 4,000 units that he's inspected. Uh, this particular ride uh, was inspected multiple times. Uh, and I'll let him talk a little bit about this, including by a third party inspector who he witnessed uh, inspecting this ride. Um, we will get to the bottom of this. We will investigate it. Uh, there will be complete transparency. We will have some records for you available this evening that will be able to show how these, how this particular ride was inspected and, um, and release that to all of you. Of course, we want to get to the bottom of this, not only because we're concerned about the situation here in the Buckeye State, but there may be things that can be learned that can help people in other states or even in even at these fairs that are not really giant, like the Ohio State Fair or like the amusement parks that we have, the great parks that we have in the state of Ohio. Uh, but make no mistake about it, it is a, a very, very sad night for all of us. And um, I will be here tomorrow again on the, I'll be here tomorrow on the fairgrounds um, and walk through the fairgrounds. I hope at some opportunity, I'll have, at some point I'll have an opportunity to uh, speak to those who um, were involved or their loved ones. Um, I think with that, let's, uh, let's take a few questions here. Yeah, yeah, the fair is going to be open. The rides will not be reopened until they're all inspected again. Maybe this is a good opportunity, uh, Mike, for you to talk about the procedures that you use, both before the fair opens, what happens as the fair opens, and what you do every day. You want, you want to talk about that and introduce yourself, Mike. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Michael Vartarella. I'm the Chief Inspector for Amusement Rights Safety for the Department of Agriculture, and I'm the guy that uh, we have a team out here of four inspectors um, and myself, and uh, office staff that actually comes out to the fairgrounds during this last week. Uh, we look at these rides at different stages. These rides come in on trucks. We're out here since last Wednesday. We take a look at them when they're static. They're not up, quite up yet. We look at them as they go up. We look at them when they're up, and we actually operate the rides and make sure that they're safe to operate. So we're looking at structure. We're looking at operations. We're looking at electrical. We're, we're going through everything to manufacture specifications so we, to assure that they're, they're put up the way the manufacturer wants them to put, be put up. Um, this is, uh, we're looking at about 4,300 pieces of equipment in this state. That includes water parks, go-kart tracks, uh, permanent parks, Cedar Points, Kings Island. So uh, we take this job very serious. And when we have a, a tragedy like this, it, uh, it hits everybody and it, it hits us really hard. So my children, my, grand, my grandchildren ride this equipment. So our guys do not rush through this stuff. We look at it, we take care of it, and we pretend it's our own. So I'll take any questions. Mike, talk, talk about the process of this ride in particular and, and okay. how it was handled. This particular ride is a what we call a spectacular piece. This, uh, this piece of equipment is, is put up uh, from multiple trucks. Uh, so it comes together, it's bolted together. Uh, we're going to take a look at it as they put it to the ground. We're going to make sure it's level. Then we're going to make sure that we take a look at the structure as it goes up. We're going to take a look at the electrical components, the uh, connections going to the boxes. We're going to look at the hydraulics. We look at any specification that the manufacturer tells us to do. In other words, if there's non-destructive testing or some type of testing that needs to be done, we make sure that all that documentation is in place and it's been completed. 
every day they're required to do pre-opening inspections. So our team looked at it. We had a third party uh, team look at it. It's been looked at uh, about three or four times over the course of two days. Were there any red flags with that drive? Any at all? No. Is there a scale in which uh, it's graded? Is there an ABC scale or a passing or not passing? No, our documentation eventually be, will be uh, available, but there is a certain document that we put in place. It's looking at structural. It's looking at uh, there's a there's a bunch of check boxes that it has to go. It's not rated on ABC. It's pass, no pass. It's pass, no. It's pass or fail. Can you give us specific? So you had a you had a case here, for example, where there were 11 rides that were not opened at 10 o'clock when the fair opened today because they weren't satisfied with the inspection. And, and then since that time, there are now four rides that are not opened at all. Uh, one of them may not be opened, the other three we'll see. But you, know, you don't want to hurry this process. And so as I talked to him and understood the, uh, the repeated efforts to try to determine this, uh, then they have the paperwork because that was my question. Okay, you say you did it. I want to know. I want to see it. Did you do it? And so when they produce it, you know, they're doing what they can. As he says, he's concerned not only about his kids but his grandkids uh, riding on these rides. We're all concerned about the loss of, of life and these kind of injuries. It's terrible, but they can only do the best that they can do. But we'll investigate. We're not going to take anybody's word for anything. The Highway Patrol will investigate. The Department of Agriculture will investigate. It will be fully uh, fully transparent for everyone to understand. You mentioned that this ride uh, went through several um, uh, processes of, of, of you know, investigating it prior to people getting on. Um, and you said it was structurally sound. So then, if, how can you guarantee with all of the inspections that this, something like this won't happen again if it passed all of the necessary testing? There's no guarantee. Uh, obviously, uh, mechanical or structural damage could be done where you can't see it metal fatigue sometimes there's there's different things that are, are not visual to the human eye can you, can you give a specific detail on what happened with this ride not at this point okay can you talk about the specifics of that ride how many people can be on it at a certain time how many cars there are where that's fully functioning i i i'd be speculating now but i'm i'm there's four seats per gondola, if you will. So you and you have f uh, three separate sweeps with four gondolas, uh, with three gondolas on it, I believe. The witness tour proves that they saw a worker prior to the ride being ran and prior to this accident uh, going up to the equipment, looking over it, making some kind of adjustment, and then started the ride, and then that's when this happened. Can you I, can, that? I can't confirm that. It's uh, Vias and Victor, A R T O R E L L A. I'm sorry, one more time. Vias and Victor, A R T O R E L L A. When was, when was it affected that the rides were closed? Because it seemed like they went on for a while after the accident. Like, like things went on like. Yeah, I got it. Right. Basically what happened is I got a call from, from our chief of staff, Beth Hansen. I then called Dave, and by that point there were people that were gathered, and I told Dave we, we don't want to keep the rides going. So I don't know exactly what time it was, but as soon as we learned, you know, was, it, I learned and I got a handle on the thing, I said we got to shut them all down. And, 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 no, I, I don't know. I mean, this is... This will be something, I know there's a video out, but this will be something that will be uh, investigated. I mean, the Highway Patrol, this is what they do. They investigate. Dave Daniel will investigate through his operation. We'll be on top of it in the governor's office. And uh, we, we don't want to speculate on any of this. What, 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 what time did the bride shut down? I can't tell you. Do we know? I, I can't tell you the exact time. After I spoke to the governor, we sent word out to our staff and they began shutting the rides down. It takes a while to unload. I think that many people saw the sky ride continuing to operate. We were trying to offload people as quickly as we possibly could and get them shut down as quickly as we possibly could. I know the president has shut down. We have two more questions, but I think there are a lot of questions that the public do want answered other than two questions, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, my question is, what message do you have to the people who are afraid to come back out here? The, there are a lot of people who are who brought season tickets, and now after hearing this, they may be afraid to ride again. What do you say to those people? 
Well, look, first of all, we don't want to prejudge an investigation other than the material we have and the ability to try to determine if everything was done properly. It appears as though it has been, okay? And if, as we look around the United States, there are accidents that occur in these parks. And nobody can say that, you know, that there isn't going to be an accident that's going to happen. So well, the only thing I can tell you is as we live our lives, we try to rely on people to do the proper inspections to ensure public safety. And people have to use their judgments. Uh, you know, this fair has been here a long time. This is the, the worst tragedy in the history of the fair. Um, but we'll recover from this as well, and we'll, we'll move on. But that doesn't mean we won't grieve for, for what happened here tonight. When you said you that, what do you mean by that? Can you clarify that? Well, no, people just need to decide how they feel. I'm going to be here at the fair tomorrow. You talk about the demographic that was injured, how many were children, how many adults? I don't have all that detail yet, and I, I don't think that's been released yet. They're trying to determine who everybody is and who the family members are. Do you have age ranges? You know, the team? We'll get you the information as quickly as we can get it to you. Why I don't want to say Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Okay. I was expected to be all clear and wasn't expected prior to the fair Yes, th this ride was inspected at, at a couple of different stages, and it was signed off today. You know, I'm okay, thank you. Thank you.